Welcome, Congressman. We're happy to have you here. Thank you very much. It's great to be here, and thank you for doing this. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on this telephone town hall meeting. I'm really glad that we can connect this way because the purpose of our call today is to answer your questions about the issues affecting your lives and how I can better serve you as your member of Congress. And the best part of it is that you don't have to go anywhere. We can talk right from the comfort of your own home. Uh, I want to be sure that you know that I have a director of senior services here in Rhode Island to uh, help you with any concerns that you might have, whether it's regarding your Medicare benefits, Social Security benefits, veterans honors, medals, you or your family member or a friend are owed. We can look into a case on your behalf regarding any benefits you think you might be owed from the federal government. Uh, Rita Murphy, who is in, uh, in my office, is dedicated to helping to make sure that you have the benefits you deserve and to clear up any questions you might have. So I want to just first say that you shouldn't hesitate to call my office and we'll be happy to connect you with uh, the right person and to help you in any way that we can. And my office number is 729-5600. Uh, so now I'd just like to offer a few remarks about where things stand in Washington. Uh, it seems like every time we turn on the television, we're hearing another politician telling us that America is broke and the solutions always seem to be the same. Cut taxes for millionaires while cutting Medicare and Social Security for seniors. Preserve billions in subsidies for big oil companies while ending job training programs for working people. But you and I know the real problem is that our system is broken. In the last 30 years, our economy has doubled in size. The pie has gotten bigger, but the people cutting it are cutting themselves bigger and bigger slices. We all know that one of the greatest challenges before us is reducing our nation's deficit. We have to be serious about this responsibility and understand the urgency of reducing spending. And that's why I've already voted to cut tens of billions of dollars this year alone, including $150 million in outrageous subsidies to Brazilian cotton farmers, $400 million to cut infrastructure improvements in Afghanistan, and another $450 million by cutting a joint strike fighter engine that even the Pentagon says it no longer needs, just to give a few examples. The fact of the matter is that we have to cut spending, and but we have to be serious about how we do it. We have to do it in a way that preserves our economic future and is consistent with our values as a nation. And one of those values, one of the most important values, is protecting and honoring our seniors. You are our greatest generation. You have fought two world wars, beat back Soviet communism, sent a man to the moon, and created the most powerful economy the world has ever known. You knew that if you worked hard and played by the rules, you could count on good benefits and a secure retirement. But that didn't happen by itself. It took the efforts of hardworking people to establish our country's economic growth. It took a government that had our back, making sure working people had unemployment insurance in tough times, and seniors had Social Security and Medicare in their golden years. But all this is now being threatened by the fiscal year 2012 budget now working its way through Congress. I believe it's dead wrong to balance the budget on the backs of our nation's seniors. It's wrong to make huge cuts in Medicare benefits and to put insurance company bureaucrats in charge of your health care and to end Medicare. This budget that is now under consideration in Congress will have negative effects on health care for older Rhode Islanders. Every single person in Rhode Island under the age of 55 would lose the guarantee of Medicare and be left to fight the insurance companies who are making profits hand over fist just to see a doctor, access routine care, and even worse, obtain critical surgical procedures. What's more, this budget proposal would immediately reestablish the Medicare prescription drug donut hole, making those critical prescriptions more expensive for you at a time when you can least afford to pay for them. What other effects would this budget have on Rhode Islanders? If this budget proposal were to be adopted, it would mean 16,976 Rhode Islanders impacted by the donut hole would pay in total an additional $9.5 million for prescription drugs in 2012. And according to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, this budget plan would more than double the typical seniors' out-of-pocket health care spending over the next decade, increasing out-of-pocket costs by more than $6,000. It also concluded that you would get less care at higher prices. And finally, the plan would leave many seniors and nursing homes at immediate risk because of cuts in Medicaid funding for nursing home care. Right now, I am fighting hard to preserve and strengthen Medicare and I've taken a strong stand against this devastating budget that ends Medicare. Once we finally stop this assault on Medicare, we can focus our attention on the resources seniors need across Rhode Island and the ones that they tell me are the most important. 
like a cost of living adjustment in Social Security benefits as our economy continues to recover. One of the first pieces of legislation I co-sponsored would do just that. You deserve a secure retirement and dignity in your later years. It's really about time the leaders of our country showed the backbone to defend that. After all, I think you'll agree that the measure of the prosperity of our nation isn't just how much wealth we can amass, it's whether the people who helped create that prosperity, particularly our seniors, can share in it and have the freedom to live the rewarding lives you deserve. So with that, I'd like to stop and hear what you think. I'd like to open up this conversation and to begin taking your questions.